Hello everyone and welcome to the One Class channel. My name is Donna Riel and I'm a recent master's graduate from the material science program from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, also known as Ontario Tech University. So today we're going to go over some commonly asked questions in chemistry at the high school, college and university level. So if you needed any help with homework or with tutoring, then check out the links in the description below. Now let's just get started on our set of questions for today's session. Okay, so question one asks, uh, just to give the IUPAC names for the following compounds. Okay, so let's draw out all of the structures first. Maybe I'll just do like the first three so that we can just get the hang of it. But the first compound. Has a six membered ring. The carboxyl group, a double bond. And also a methyl group. Sticking out as well. So when I name uh, compounds like this, I like to first number all of my carbons, starting with the most important group, which is this ketone. Let's number... In this case, I'm going to be numbering clockwise. since our double bond and our methyl group is on carbon 3 and we want to make sure we have uh, the least amount of numbers in our final name. So instead of going from counterclockwise, I'll go clockwise so that it's only on carbon 3 instead of carbon 1, 2, 3, 5. Okay, so after I named all the carbons, I'll first write out the parent, which in this case is the ring itself. So when you name ringed compounds, you write cyclo, and then since there are six carbons in the ring, I'm going to put cyclohex. And first, I'll note the methyl group on carbon 3. So the prefix, I'll just write 3 methyl. Three methyl cyclohex. And then from here, I'll show where my double bond is. So it's also on carbon 3. So I'll just write 3. N, since it's a double bond, you put N. If it was a triple bond, we put ine. And then lastly, I just have to show that there is a ketone on carbon 1. So I would just go 1, own. Okay, so this gives us the name 3 methyl cyclohex 3 n one own Okay, so let's look at the second compound. Second compound has a carbon that has C H. So it has one hydrogen and one oxygen on one of its carbons. So that means this is an aldehyde. Let me draw it like this. 
And then the middle carbon has an alcohol. And then there. is another alcohol at the end here. Okay, so they also showed some stereochemistry. Let me just fill that in. Okay, so first, again, I'm going to find my parent chain. So in this case, it is these three carbons. And then I'm also going to number it. So starting at the aldehyde, since that is the most important substituents on this chain. And now we just have to show which carbons have the alcohol groups. So in terms of stereochemistry, this is an R configuration. And then the carbons with the alcohol groups are carbon 2 and carbon 3. So I'm going to write 2, 3, di to signify there's two alcohols. And then hydroxy. And then propanal. Okay, so this compound ends in al, so this tells us that there's an aldehyde group. And notice that we don't have to say one al, it is just assumed that carbon one is the one that has the aldehyde. Okay, so this compound is R23-dihydroxypropanal. And now let's just do the last one. Uh, we'll just end it at part C. We have another cyclo group. Methyl. Okay, so notice that we have a side group here that consists of three carbons, but it isn't like a straight three carbon chain. It, it's kind of in a different configuration. So typically we would only write propyl as the group but since it is in this different configuration, this is called isopropyl. So it's still a three carbon chain, it just kind of looks more like a Y instead of uh, a straight chain. Okay, so again, I'm just going to number this compound starting with the aldehyde group, or ketone group as one, and then going clockwise, So let me write down the parent first. So similar to part A, this is cyclohex. And now I'm just going to show where all my side groups are. So on carbon 5, we have the isopropyl group.
And then on carbon two, we have a methyl group. I don't think I'll fit two methyl And now I can write this cyclo X. And now again, I'm just going to show where my double bond is. So it's on carbon two. So two N. And then on carbon one is our ketone. One own. Okay, so five isopropyl, two methyl, cyclohex, two and one own. Okay, so now let's see what the junior tutor said. Aldehydes are named by replacing the terminal E of the corresponding alkane name with al. The parent chain must contain the CHO group, and the CHO carbon is numbered as carbon one. For cyclic aldehydes, in which the carboxyl group is directly attached to a ring, the suffix carbaldehyde is used. Ketones are named by replacing the terminal E of the corresponding alkane name with own. The parent chain is the longest one that includes the ketone group, and the numbering begins at the end near to the carbonyl compound. If other functional groups are present, the double bonded oxygen is considered a substituent on a parent chain, the prefix oxo. OXO is used. Okay, so let's look at the three that we did. The junior tutor also got 3-methyl cyclohex 3 and one own. For B, they got R23-dihydroxypropanal. C, 5-isopropyl-2-methyl cyclohex 2 and one own. And then the ones that we didn't do for D, they started numbering the carbon at the first, going left to right. So they have two methyl, uh, pentan, and then carbon three has the ketone, so they put three own. For the part E, they started numbering here. So you go one, two, three, four. So three hydroxybutanal. And then lastly, they have a benzene ring this time, and one for dicarbaldehyde. So this shows that there are two aldehyde groups on carbons one and four. Okay, so this solution is correct. Thank <laughs> you.